Good morning, St. Luke's. Today is the commemoration of VE Day, the 75th anniversary of the formal end to the Second World War. And you can see here at the Vicarage, uh, we've got some bunting up. Uh, we're planning a moment's silence at 11 o'clock. Uh, there'll be tea and scones and jam and cream in the afternoon uh, and a history lesson at some point during the course of the day as well. And it's right and important that as a church, uh, we mark moments of both national and world significance. Yesterday, if you remember, I spoke about the high standards of God's gathered community, uh, the importance of unity, generosity and integrity. And that today I talk about how God's gathered community are to interact with the world in which he has placed us. And I put this today under the title of being an engaged church. God's people are to be engaged with the world that we are in. And at this time, part of that engagement is that it is appropriate that we give thanks for the end to an historic conflict and the peace of the succeeding years. Let me read for you an introduction to a service that the Church of England put together for this day. It says this, that dear friends, we have come together on this day to commemorate the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe, when the sounds of war fell silent on this continent. We come together conscious of our need for God's forgiveness, for the sin and the desire to dominate others that leads to conflict between people and war between nations. And as we remember the many soldiers, sailors and airmen who gave their lives restraining evil and opposing tyranny, so we also come in thanksgiving for the years of peace that the nations of Europe have enjoyed since the Second World War. Part of today is that we acknowledge and we give thanks for peace that God has given and also deliverance uh, from warfare and evil. And as we've been looking at the church in the book of Acts, we've seen God's people engage in the world around. And those similar themes of deliverance uh, from evil and conflict uh, are seen alongside a promised message of peace. So firstly, we see the church engaging with the world as agents of healing and deliverance. It's expressed in terms of miracles and exorcisms. We see that people would bring uh, those that were sick and diseased, even on mats, to lay them at the feet of the apostles, that even Peter's shadow might pass over them and they would be healed. Then too, there is the deliverance from evil spirits that takes place. Now the descriptions and the events of those early stages of the church are particularly dramatic. But the themes uh, remain consistent and vital and important. Healing and the deliverance from evil. Throughout Jesus' ministry, throughout the history of the church and throughout the New Testament uh, that we've been looking at in Acts, God's people are called upon to tend and to comfort the sick and the suffering, working for the elimination of evil and the establishment of justice in the world. It's done for two really vital and important reasons. Firstly, as a reflection of compassion upon all people, recognising that they are made in the image of God, but also to point towards the promise of God's eternal kingdom where there is no more pain or suffering, disease or sickness, death or sin, where evil is no more. This though is a kingdom that is to come. The church is never justified in being absent from society. Christians must engage. And it's been wonderful to see some of the ways in which Christians and churches have engaged in our society around during our current crisis, even here in Cheltenham. Obviously the, the long-term uh, establishment of a food bank and the way that Christians have continued to run and to operate that. Uh, the initiative sponsored by the Diocese of Gloucester, the Long Table Initiative, uh, providing free meals for the vulnerable, uh, also paid for delivered meals to those that might be self-isolating, provided free of charge for NHS uh, care and care workers. But then also beyond this, we see the way in which Christians are engaged in community service, health and education, or even the armed forces. 
and it's really important that we all uh, seek to engage in our society and culture uh, whatever our position or place doing so eager to comfort those in need and establish uh, more just ways of operating and eliminating evil wherever we see it however it's important to remember that to engage in this way is to show that there is actually something deeply wrong with our world and hope must be spoken into this as well. The apostles were actually arrested uh, for the work that they were doing and they're put in prison. Miraculously, an angel breaks them free and gives them this commission in verse 20. Go and tell the message of this new life. Go and tell the full message of this new life. And so secondly, the church engages in the world by proclaiming new life. The church engages with the culture and world around, but is not subject to it. Later, Peter will declare that we must obey God and not men. The truth is that healing and deliverance from evil will never fully come in this life. We might celebrate today deliverance from evil and a temporary stemming uh, of, uh, of conflict in the world, but we must never put a false hope in humanity's ability to establish this long term or indeed that the church can build a perfect uh, humanity that will only come when Jesus returns and establishes God's kingdom and so Peter proclaims that message at the end of our reading this morning we must obey God rather than men the God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead God exalted him to his own right hand as Prince and Saviour, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel and to the whole world. The fatal flaw of our world is that we are infected by sin and evil, and only the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ delivers us from this. Only repentance and faith and new life in the power of the Holy Spirit are the full message of new life and deliverance that God makes known. However, this message and this deliverance is full, freely and readily available to all that will hear and receive it. This is how the church can engage in the world around, by being those that bring healing and comfort and deliverance, and also by being those that proclaim a message of full life in Jesus Christ. This is a prayer that finished uh, the Thanksgiving service on that first VE day in 1945. And I offer it uh, to conclude us this morning. And so blessing and honour, thanksgiving and praise, more than we can utter, more than we can conceive, be unto thee, O most adorable Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, by all angels, men, all creatures, for ever and ever, Amen and Amen to God the Father, who first loved us and made us accepted in the Beloved, to God the Son, who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, to God the Holy Ghost, who sheds the love of God abroad in our hearts, be all love and glory for time and eternity. Amen.